Welcome in Jesus' name. It's good to be gathered together. And uh, we're starting the church service an hour early today, I noticed. So, uh, <laughs> no, it's good to be gathered together. And it looks like most of you put your clocks ahead. And so that's a, a good thing. Um, if you take a look in the bulletin, you've been seeing some of the announcements roll across um, up front. I do want to remind you that this week, um, our Lenten service is here at Rose. And the soup and sandwich will start at 530 in that way and I encourage you to uh, take part and be a part of the things that way. Um, this week, Thursday here at, at, at Rose's WMF and uh, Mary Dieter is coming in and so um, you're invited to take part in that ladies and um, be a part of things that way. You have one other insert there and I just want to make note of both of those. Next Sunday, um, following the potluck time here at Rose, there's going to be a game time um, and some family fun that way. So if you want to bring some games and just be around for a bit, um, you can stay for five minutes or you can stay for five hours. It's up to you um, along those lines, but it'll be a neat time um, and uh, just a time to play some games in that way. I'm guessing it'll probably be 50 degrees or something that day, so it'll be a little harder to stay inside. I don't know, but uh, maybe it'll be 20 below again. Who knows? Um, but that opportunity is there. But on the back side of that, um, is the, the invitation to the Sabina movie that we're going to be showing on Friday, March 25th. So a week and a half or so here from now. I did preview that movie this, this weekend now, and uh, I would encourage you, if you could, to come and take part in that. It is very well done. And the whole idea of forgiveness, the true story with uh, Richard and Sabina Wormst Wor Wormstrand um, is just amazing in the first place. And so it's a... Uh, Really well done, and uh, it will uh, touch your heart. I would encourage you to take part and be a part of that. There will be a meal that goes along with that served by the youth at 6 o'clock as well. Um, the prayer list is there in the bulletin. and encourage you to keep praying. Um, a lot of different things that are listed there. Um, I do have one other announcement to let you know about that's not in the bulletin. We did get a call from over at United Free. They are going to be doing a baby shower for Amos David Nimala, the, um, Dave and Jenny's new little, little guy that was born uh, about a month ago here. Um, but a little baby shower from 10 to noon over at United Free next Saturday um, to let you know that um, as it goes. 10 to noon next Saturday um, for little Amos David Nimala. I'm jealous. They use the name Amos. I love that name. But uh, with things that way. Any other prayer requests or announcements I'm forgetting today? Yes? Whose birthday is it today? Is it somebody's birthday today? I don't know. It's my sister's birthday today. Today, Did you know that? Yep. I don't know. Who's, is it anybody's birthday today? It is my sister's birthday today. It's Ryan's tomorrow and... Levi's on Tuesday, so we have a full week. But let's talk with God. Lord, thank you even for a question like whose birthday it is and uh, the reminder of our time here upon earth. Thank you for each day because it is a gift. And we pray that today would be a gift too, that your word would touch each of our hearts, that it would challenge us where we need to be challenged and encourage us where we need to be encouraged but most of all that would draw ourselves unto you so that we would know you as our lord and savior and live that out lord you see all the needs that are in our bulletin and we lift those and cast those cares before you knowing that you care for each of us i pray that the people that are listed in our bulletin that would know that care and would know your hand upon their lives. Lord, where there's physical illness, we pray for healing. But again, we just put those things into your hands and ask for you to come alongside. And uh, we're, most of all, we just pray, <coughs> excuse me, for those hearts <coughs> that are hurting. We pray for our world and we pray for the people of Ukraine. We lift them before you and ask for your hand upon those refugees and uh, to be with those that are still in the country. We pray for your hand to bring about peace. 
But again, we know that things in this world um, come about in different ways and your purposes are, are beyond our, our sight at times. But we pray for peace. And Lord, thank you for the gift of this day. Again, we just pray that you would be glorified, that you would be the one that we would love with our whole heart. Do your work, God, I pray. In your name, amen. Let's stand together and sing our opening song. And I was thinking about how we need God's help every day. And he's our help in ages past, but he's our hope for years to come. Let's sing that together. Please be seated. God is our help and we turn to him this morning and I'd ask that you'd bow your hearts with me as we confess our sin together corporately but knowing that he's the only one who truly forgives and the one who has paid the price. So let's, let's confess this together. Join me if you would. Heavenly Father, we come before you to seek your mercy and grace. We have sinned against you and against ourselves with our wrong attitudes of selfishness and pride. We have not followed completely what you've told us in your word and have at times even rebelled against your ways. We are sorry. We seek your forgiveness and cleansing through your Son, Jesus Christ, to whom all praise and glory will be given. In his name, amen. I'll call upon our scripture reader today to come. Scripture reading this morning is from Luke 12, 1 through 12. Meanwhile, when a crowd of many thousands has gathered, so they were trampling on one another. Jesus began to speak, first to his disciples, saying, Be on your guard against the yeast of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. There is nothing concealed that will not be disclosed or hidden that will not be made known. What you have said in the dark will be heard in the daylight, and what you have whispered in the ear in the inner rooms will be proclaimed from the roofs. I tell you, my friends, do not be afraid of those who kill the body, and after that can do no more. But I will show you whom you should fear. Fear him who, after the killing of the body, has the power to throw you into hell. Yes, I tell you, fear him. Are not five sparrows sold for two pennies? Yet not one of them is forgotten by God. Indeed, the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. I tell you, whoever acknowledges me before men, the Son of Man will also acknowledge him before the angels of God. But he who disowns me before men will be disowned before the angels of God. 
and everyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven. But anyone who blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven. When you are brought before the synagogues, rulers and authorities, do not worry about how you will defend yourselves or what you will say, for the Holy Spirit will teach you at that time what you should say. Thank you, Keith, for reading the scripture here today. And uh, that's going to be the text for the message as well as we look at God's word and we come back to the Gospel of Luke for a couple weeks here. Let's proclaim our faith today. Let's confess what we believe. So if you'd join me as we use the Apostles' Creed again to do that. But again, may it not just be something we say out loud, but may it be something we truly believe in our hearts. So join me if you would. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated on the right hand of God the Father Almighty, from where he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let's continue in worship by giving back to God with our tithes and offerings here today. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, as we have confessed that we believe in you, would you use these gifts so that people may know the truth of what you're, you've done for us, your death, your resurrection, and your coming again. Lord, we pray this in your name. Amen. <laughs> Please be seated. We're um, blessed this morning. We're going to have some special music. Anna is going to do some special music for us. So we look forward to what you have, Anna. Okay, am I on? So this is what happened. I'm a sub for playing today. And over the last month, the song has just kind of been popping into my head. And I was in charge of special music this month, and I had some de declinations. So I thought, OK, I'll do this song. And if I crack, don't worry. Just listen to the words. That's the best part. your 
burden heavy as you bear it all alone? Does the road you travel harbor dangers yet unknown? Are you growing weary in the struggle of it all? Jesus will help you when on his name you call. Walking by your side in his love we hide all the day through. When you get discouraged, just remember what to do. Reach out to Jesus, he's reaching out to you. Is your life you're living filled with sorrow and despair? Does the future press you? with this worry and its care. Are you tired and friendless? Have you almost lost your way? Jesus will help you. Just come to him today. He is always there, hearing every prayer, faithful and true. Walking by your side, in his love we hide all the day through. When you get discouraged, just remember what to do. Reach out to Jesus. Reach out to Jesus. Reach out to Jesus. He's reaching out to you. Thank you, Anna, so much for that message, to reach out to Jesus because he's reaching out to us. Um, we can always turn to him. I'll call on the kids to come on up for the children's message, and they get to find out what's going to happen today after we've done A through Z, I guess. You're wondering? Well, you kind of figured out, maybe. What is that? Oh, look at that. <laughs> It's the bag. It's the bag. Yeah, there's a bag here. There's a bag. I figured maybe that's what we're going to do is go back to the bag. Do you guys remember what we did with the bag before? No. Z. You're right. To bring a random object. So this is going to get kind of scary for me to actually hand off this bag now to you guys because you're going to take it for the next time, Z. But before we do, I've got something in the bag today. Anybody want to reach in and grab it? Anybody not want to reach in and grab it? All right, here we go. Come and reach, come and reach in. Augie, go ahead and reach in. Grab what we got in there. There's actually two things in there. Let's see. There's two of these. What are, the, what are these things? Rulers. rulers. How could I do a children's sermon about rulers? Any ideas? Yeah. Measuring Jesus love. Oh, we could measure Jesus' love. I never thought of that, but can we measure Jesus' love? No. The Bible says it's, it's beyond our knowing that way. Do you know that the Bible is kind of a measuring stick for you and me? We can measure our lives by the Bible, can't we? Have, have, have any of you measured up and done it perfectly, what the Bible has said? Maybe I should measure here and check. No, he isn't quite right. Get my Bible set. How are you doing here? No. Should we check the, them out there? Do you think any of them have measured up with the Bible and done everything perfect? Yeah. I heard yep and I heard not even close. <laughs> You know, none of us has really measured up to being perfectly holy or to be perfect as God is. So we need his help, don't we? How did God help us so that we can measure up someday? What did God do? Did he buy you a ticket to a ba basketball game or something? No. He did kind of buy us a ticket, though, to heaven if we're willing to receive it. 
How did he do that? What did Jesus do? He, yeah, he, he died on the cross to take our punishment so that we could be forgiven. And then he rose again to defeat even death for us. You know, I was thinking about that. I didn't initially think about that, but here it is right here with the two rulers. When we look at the Bible, it also shows us how Jesus paid the price for us. And we're set to go that way. Can I make it what? Less bendy. Less bend bendy? Yeah. I don't know. But God has played the way for us, so we can do that with the ruler. Now, next week, who took the bag? Oh, you took the bag already? Got it? Got oh, I have it here. Okay. Um, if you pay me $100, Joey, I might let you. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. You probably, we'll get, we'll get it around. We got a few weeks. We'll get it around, guys. If you all get a chance to do that, which would be great. The only thing I don't, I mean, if you want to bring a Mississippi squirrel, that's okay. But uh, be careful what you put in the bag next week. We'll see how that goes um, that way. But can I pray for you guys? And when we're done today, you guys can take a couple pieces of candy, but make sure that you share one of those pieces with one of the people out here who don't measure up, okay? All right, you can share with any of us that way and let us know. So let's pray. Lord, thank you that your word tells us the truth that we don't measure up, but also thank you for the truth. Jesus, you are the truth, the way and the life. <laughs> and so help these young kids as they grow in you that, to know that you are the one that they can rely upon. Help them to trust you more and more each day <laughs> and to lean upon you as their Savior. We pray in your name, Jesus. Amen. You guys can head on now. Oh, thank you. Or we can measure in the chart. You want, to, want to measure? Yeah. Check it out. Okay. Let's sing the song before the message today. And uh, this song talks about Jesus coming back again. And uh, we know he will come back, back someday. So let's sing it together. Christ returneth. It may be at morn when the day is awaking, when sunlight through darkness and shadow is breaking, that Jesus will come in the fullness of glory to see from the world his own. Oh, Jesus, how long, how long, ere we shout
you'd open your Bibles again to Luke chapter 12. But before we do, uh, it's wonderful to sing that song. Think about the fact that Christ could return before we're done today. But he might wait a long time yet, too. <laughs> but oh, what joy it is for a believer. Are you ready for that day <laughs> when Christ comes? At Spruce this morning at the children's message, I just had one kid up front, but it was wonderful. He, he said, I'd like, to, I'd like to ask Jesus a question. So I'm asked, I asked him, what's the question you'd like to ask Jesus? And he couldn't think of a question, but he said, boy, I'd like to see him. He said, I'd like to see him. And what a day that will be when we can see him face to face. Now we get a little taste of that today as we come face to face with Jesus again here in Luke 12. I've entitled the message today, The Right Kind of Fear. I know we talked about fear last week, slavish fear and childlike fear and the differences between them and how the scripture says that we should fear God, but then it says don't be afraid <laughs> and don't fear. And we'll see that again here as Jesus talks to his disciples. And we'll see as the key to all this, the key message, the key truth that is there for us, <laughs> And we'll see in a bit. But before I ask, give you that key truth, I want to ask you a question. Does it bother you? Does it bother you what, what other people think about you? <laughs> I'm seeing some people like, oh, some people are like, yeah, it bothers me. It, in fact, it drives our lives a lot of times, doesn't it? We think people think about us a lot. They maybe don't think about as much as we think. But it drives what we buy, it drives what we do, it, it drives how we try to make ourselves look. <laughs> and we get so caught up in fearing man. And the truth that Jesus wants to bring out here is he wants to bring out the truth that we are to fear God, not man. <laughs> we are to fear God, not man. We'll see that again and again is what Jesus brings out in this passage. <laughs> and we're going to see that right first of all there as Jesus now is in the crowd, and it's a big crowd. Uh, it's, it's described as more than a thousand people out there. <laughs> They're going on one another, but in the midst of the crowd, he turns to his disciples, and he begins to teach them this truth. Now I want to remind you what has happened here. Back in chapter 11... Jesus has confronted the Pharisees, the religious leaders of the day, the teachers of the law. He's confronted them that they are more concerned about doing the right things or more concerned about what people think or what themselves think than what God thinks. They're more concerned about all of that stuff rather than trusting in the Lord with all their heart, with all their soul, with all their mind, and then doing the right things because of that. <laughs> None of us can measure up to God. <laughs> and that's what they were trying to do. They took the law of God and they turned it into something that it was not meant to be. It was something that was meant there to be something that shows us that we can't measure up. And then after we trust that the Lord can do those things, then we do the things that God wants. <laughs> they took something good and they turned it into something that became more about fearing others. And that's what we're going to see in verses 1 through 3. First of all, is that the fear of man produces hypocrisy. When Jesus confronted them on this, it aroused their fury at the Lord. They now, and if you look up in the last verse of chapter 11, you see it there. They were waiting. <clears throat> they were waiting to catch Jesus in something that he might say. They were waiting to find some way to get rid of Jesus. <laughs> so in the midst of the large crowd, Jesus turns to his disciples and he warns them about this. And in verse 1, you're going to see the example of hypocrisy. He does it there. You see it at the end of verse 1. He says, be on your guard against the yeast of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. Now, 
What is the hypocrisy? It's the yeast of the Pharisees. <laughs> when you see yeast, what do you think of? Bread. Because we use yeast in bread to do what? To, to make it rise. And you don't need a whole lot of yeast because the yeast spreads itself out to cause that to happen. In the scriptures, yeast is one of those symbolic things that Jesus and that the Jews and that God had used to picture what sin does. You want to get rid of that yeast. And in this case, you want to get rid of the yeast of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. Now, what is hypocrisy? <laughs> hypocrisy is putting on a mask, is what hypocrisy is. It's a word, hypocritas, that's about acting. Actors were some call, sometimes called hypocrites because they were pretending to be someone that they weren't. They put on the mask. That's what the Pharisees were doing. Their hypocrisy, they were trying to put on the best front they could when secretly inside they were thinking other things and doing other things. How many of us do that, by the way? We do it pretty often. I remember as a youth that we, were, we would talk about that, how sometimes we're different. When we were in school, we acted differently than when we were in church. On Friday nights, we acted differently than what we did on Sunday mornings. That hypocrisy and the hypocrisy of the Pharisees as they were spreading these wrong truths and trying to make people do, do, do and try to put up the front as best they could. It was spreading like yeast. <laughs> I love, well, let's put it this way. Paul put it this way in 1 Corinthians 5, 6 through 8. He said, don't you know, he said to the Corinthians, don't you know that a little yeast works through the whole batch of dough? Get rid of the old yeast that it may be a new batch without yeast as you really are. For Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed. Therefore, let's keep the festival, not with the old yeast, the yeast of malice and wickedness, but with bread without yeast, the bread of sincerity and truth. Not just putting on a show, but what is true. Back in Exodus, as the people were getting ready to celebrate the Passover, and as they would celebrate it year after year, they would, for seven days, they would not eat bread with yeast in it. Because the idea was that yeast is something that spreads throughout, and you wanted to clean up that yeast, to clean out the sin in your life. And the only way that sin could be cleaned out was by the Passover lamb. The only way the angel of death could pass over your house. <laughs> See, if you really care about what God thinks about, <laughs> you won't get caught in the trap of pretending to live up to others' expectations. You and I need to fear God, not man. That's what Jesus is pointing out. To fear God, not man. One person put it this way. They said it's a disease to please. <laughs> it's a disease to please. It corrupts the way we were created to function. We weren't created to perform to one another to please man. <laughs> we were created to live in response to God, our creator. To love God with all our heart and then to love others. In the next couple of verses, we see hypocrisy exposed or the exposure of hypocrisy. And Jesus simply tells his disciples and he tells us there in verses 2 and 3, he says, there's nothing covered up that will not be revealed. He's just being straightforward. And hidden that will not be known. Accordingly, whatever you have said in the dark will be heard in the light. <laughs> and what you have whispered in the inner rooms will be proclaimed on the roofs. At the judgment of mankind, 
all hypocrisy will be revealed. <laughs> a telemarketer called uh, a home one day and there was this little voice on the other side that said, and it was whispering, it said, hello. And the telemarketer said, what's your name? And the voice said, I'm Jimmy. How old are you, Jimmy? I'm four years old. Is your mother home? Yes, but she's busy. Is your dad home? Yes, but he's busy. <laughs> um, is there anybody else who's there? And he said, the police. But they're busy too, he said. Is there anybody else around? Any other grown up there that I can talk to? He said, yeah, there's firemen here too. But they're busy too. Jimmy, there's all these people in your house. Who, who can, can't I talk with any of them? What are they doing? They're looking for me. <laughs> You and I can try and hide things. But every thought we've ever thought, everything we've ever done, will one day be fully exposed. Jesus points that truth out to them. <laughs> Nothing that's hidden will not be made known. And in the end, God sees. He knows all things, doesn't he? Every human will be judged by God rightly and justly. <laughs> the words in the Bible that are there, and sometimes we've used them wrongly on people. <laughs> Proverbs 15.3 says that the eyes of the Lord are everywhere, keeping watch on the wicked and the good. <laughs> but when we read this here, there's an utter futility and hypocrisy. We can try and hide and maybe even make it through this life hiding things. But they aren't really hidden. <laughs> Romans chapter 2, verse 16. It says that in the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. One day God will judge our secrets. And in 1 Corinthians 4, verse 5, Paul wrote, he said, My conscience is clear, but that doesn't make me innocent. It's the Lord who judges. Therefore, don't judge. <laughs> judge nothing before the appointed time. Wait till the Lord comes. He will bring to light what is hidden in darkness and will expose the motives of men's hearts. And at that time, each will receive his praise from God. <laughs> you know, it's hard to listen to that and to look at things, but... It also is a point where if we keep trying to hide something, it will be exposed eventually. The hypocrisy of the Pharisees was exposed. The things that we have hidden and the secret sins that we have will be exposed. But what's ironic about all this is that at the same time Jesus is pointing this out, he is on the way to the cross to bring about that light that will expose those things, but then also that light then will bring forgiveness when we come to Him. I was just thinking about that as we, that movie, Sabina, you will see that very clearly. <laughs> the forgiveness that God works in hearts and lives, and He can if we'll let ourselves be open we are to fear God, not man and what man thinks, but to fear God and to trust Him. See, this fear of God then will produce freedom in our lives, true freedom. In verses 4 through 7, the first point that gets brought out is the true fear. What is true fear? <laughs> Jesus says, I tell you, my friends... Do not fear those who kill the body and after that have nothing more that they can do. But I will warn you whom to fear. Fear him who after he has killed has the authority to cast into hell. Yes, I tell you, fear him.
Don't fear people. Kill the body. But do fear God. He has the authority. He has the authority to judge. <laughs> now some people will just pull this verse out and they'll say, see, you have a God who throws people into hell. Who, what puts people into hell? Does God put people in hell? He has the authority to judge, but what puts people into hell? Our sin. Our sin. God doesn't desire that. He doesn't want that. But God is righteous. And it's in His righteousness that only brings about the fact that He can love us. Because as you look at the very next part of this portion of Scripture, it's amazing that this is what's tied together. <laughs> and by the way, before I go any farther, I want you to note there, what does He call His disciples at this point? There in verse 4. My friends. Do you know that in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, that's the only time that Jesus calls His disciples calls anybody his friends? <laughs> My friends, <laughs> fear God, not man. <laughs> God is the one who has that authority. Fear him. Be in awe and respect and honor him. Because the next part of this becomes so very clear. Verses 6 through 7, we get to see God's care <laughs> And it's wonderful that this is tied together the way God does it. He says there, are not five sparrows sold for two pennies? Sparrows, by the way, could be eaten in those days. It would be poor man's food. <laughs> I heard somebody go, ugh. Yeah. But it was poor man's food. But aren't five sparrows sold for two cents? Yet not one of them <laughs> is forgotten by God. Indeed, the very hairs on your head are numbered. And then he says those wonderful words, don't be afraid. <laughs> you are worth more than many, many sparrows. God knows everything about you, yet he still wants you. And you are of utmost worth to him. He knows how many hairs are on your head. That's easier on some of our heads than others, but... Uh, God knows those things. And if God cares about those, ins those seemingly insignificant things, how much more is He going to care about what is significant, your soul? To sum this up, there is a judge, but the judge here, God Himself is one of mercy and grace. He has a standard. He will not waver from His standard. He holds to it. But He measures us with mercy and grace. And He measures us if we will trust in the One who has measured up. <laughs> He's telling us, do away with that hypocrisy and be obedient to the Lord. Live your life out for Him. <laughs> in your home, in your work, in your play. One person put it this way. They said, don't just play the part. Don't just play the part and be that hypocrite. Live the part. Live as one who knows everything is seen by God. Live as one who knows that you're accountable to God. But then live as one who knows that you're intimately cared for by God. Fear God, not man. And that leads to the last verses here, that this fear of God then that gets made visible in our lives, that it is seen in what will happen. The fear of God is made visible. It produces a bold confession. Look at verses 8 and 9 there. It says, I tell you, whoever publicly acknowledges me before others, the Son of Man will also acknowledge before the angels of God. But whoever disowns me, God says, Jesus says, before others will be, dis before others will be disowned before the angels of God. <laughs> You're in the throne room of God. 
on Judgment Day, when you have acknowledged God before people where you're at, <laughs> there you stand in that throne room. Jesus is both your intercessor, He's the defense attorney for you, He's the advocate, He's the one who has paid the price for you, and yet He's the prosecutor, He's the judge in the heavenly court. <laughs> But if you have acknowledged Jesus before men, Jesus says you will be acknowledged before the angels of heaven. Your trust and your loyalty to God, to Jesus Christ, can never remain abstract. If you keep it as an abstract idea or you only keep it secret to yourself, in your mind, it can't be that way. It's a personal thing, but it's never one you can hide or, tr or to merely try and act out. You need to let it be known. In your words and your actions, but most importantly, by living out what's in your heart, by trusting in Him. To fear God, not man. To live for Jesus, that's what matters. <laughs> and this fear of God, as it's made visible, it produces a bold proclamation, not just a confession of who He is and what we live, but it's a bold proclamation that's laid forth. <laughs> and the disciples are going to have to go through this. This is part of what Jesus is laying out for them. They're going to have to be put into these spots. But before we go any farther, I need to stop at verse 10 for a little second. Because there's something that's brought out in verse 10. It's brought out the unpardonable sin, as some people call it. If you read it there, it says, Everyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven. But if you blaspheme the Holy Spirit, you will not be forgiven. This has caused a lot of people struggles at times. If I blaspheme the Holy Spirit, that means I'm done for. I can never be forgiven. And before I go any farther, blasphemy against the Holy Spirit is unforgivable. How do we blaspheme the Holy Spirit? Here's how we blaspheme the Holy Spirit. <laughs> the Holy Spirit is important because for a believer, when we trust in the Lord as our Savior, the Holy Spirit lives within us. It's what, if we're truly saved, <laughs> we're Spirit-filled in that sense. And the, what Jesus is emphasizing here is the importance of that Holy Spirit in the life. But to blaspheme the Holy Spirit, we might say things that we, the, against Jesus and different things, but if we blaspheme the Holy Spirit is when we live in unbelief. Blasphemy of the Holy Spirit is when it comes down to that day of judgment at the end and when you stand before the throne Blasphemy of the Holy Spirit is when you haven't believed. When you've known what the truth is. Now, in the Scriptures, it says none of us is without excuse. We read that in Romans chapter 1, verses 20, verse 19 and 20. Jesus, God has shown Himself in His invisible attributes, His eternal power, His nature, that's been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world and the things that have been made. That's there. Nobody's without excuse in this world. But when we've refused to seek for that truth, when we've refused or when we've known the truth and then we've walked away from it, in Hebrews chapter 6, 4 through 6, it says it's impossible in the case that is those who have once been enlightened, they've tasted the heavenly gift. They shared and then they taste the goodness of the Word of God and what Christ has done, and then they fall away. Because if they're going to live in unbelief, they're crucifying the Son of God again and again. It's hard to talk about. But I want you to think about in Scripture people who have denied God. Think about Peter. Peter. He denied Jesus three times, didn't he? Did God pull him back? 
Did God call him back to himself? Did God forgive him? No matter what you and I have done in this world, we can be forgiven. But when it comes to the end of our lives, at that point, there's no more time. There's no more chance for forgiveness if we haven't received that forgiveness. Do you believe? <laughs> Think about King Manasseh. He was one of the worst kings, if not the worst king ever, but what happened at the end of his life? He came back. Does God want Putin to be saved if you say no then why would he want us to be saved <laughs> God desires all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit is when we choose to live in that unbelief and when it comes to the end have we feared God or have we feared man have we trusted in Jesus? <laughs> or have we trusted in what other people think? Verse 11 and 12, do we see this bold proclamation here? <laughs> Jesus, Jesus promises the disciples that they will be sustained in the midst of the persecution. You'll be empowered by the Holy Spirit. You see those words there. When you're brought before synagogues, rulers, and authorities, don't worry about how you'll defend yourself or what you will say, for the Holy Spirit will teach you at that time what you should say. <laughs> In the book of Acts, we see this again and again, the many examples of how God gave the words. You ever had those times where you just haven't had the right words, you think, to answer somebody, or you don't? Be assured that whatever words you do share at those times, God will use them. Even in the way we stumble in those things, God will use those words. And that's what he tells his disciples. Don't worry about those things at that time. Fear God, is what he's saying, not man. Nikita Khrushchev, the uh, premier of Russia, speaking of Russia, back in the Soviet days, one time was speaking up at the Supreme Soviet. This was not long after the, uh, Joseph Stalin had passed away and, and, and uh, Premier Khrushchev stood up in front of all this Supreme Soviet and he began to be very critical of the late Premier, Joseph Stalin, and all the atrocities that he had done. When he was up speaking, someone from the audience sent up a note. And this is what the note read. It read, What were you doing when Stalin committed all those atrocities, Mr. Khrushchev? <laughs> what were you doing? When he got the note and when he read it, he, he um, was a little bit upset. And he yelled out, he said, Who sent up that note? And nobody stirred. And he yelled out again, I'll give him one minute to stand up. They waited a full minute. Nobody moved. Nobody dared move. At the end of the minute, this is what Khrushchev said. He said, all right, I'll tell you what I was doing when Stalin was doing all those evil atrocities. I was doing exactly what the writer of this note was doing. Exactly nothing. I was afraid to be counted. <laughs> do we fear God or do we fear men? <laughs> Oliver Cromwell, in the British sense of things, the UK, the British Empire, there was a shortage of currency back when Oliver Cromwell was in leadership, and the representatives were carefully searching every nation, all around the nation, in hopes of finding silver to meet the meat of the, the emergency. 
After a whole month of searching, the committee returned with its report. They said, we've searched the whole empire in vain, seeking to find silver. To our dismay, we found none anywhere except in the cathedrals where the statues of the saints are made of choice silver. To this, Oliver Cromwell eloquently answered, and he didn't realize how eloquent he was answering here, but he said, let's melt down the saints. Let's put them into circulation. Let's melt down the saints. Don't be afraid of men. We need to be put into circulation. And true fear of God, if we live in that, knowing what He's done for us, it brings us to the cross every time. Because in the cross, you and I have forgiveness. In the cross, you and I have our sins covered. In the cross, those secret things can be brought out and forgiveness can be there and repentance brings about that freedom to then live it out, <laughs> to be melted down and put into circulation, so to speak. <laughs> what a Savior we have, don't we? <laughs> fear God, not men. That's what true fear is, is to trust in the Lord with that childlike trust, <laughs> like the little kid this morning, I want to see Jesus. <laughs> Let's pray. Lord, thank you for the truths here. And Lord, thank you for your forgiveness. Help us to simply trust in what you've done, to know that good news, and then to live it out. Help us with those secret things that we're keeping away. Help us to take off the mask and to live for you openly and honestly, knowing that you have paid the price for us. Thank you, Jesus. I pray these things in your name and look forward to how you will work in each of our hearts. And I thank you that you bring forgiveness and you give us that strength to live. Even when we stumble and fall, you will pick us up. Help us to walk humbly with you, I pray. Amen. Let's stand together and sing our closing song. Um, this song kind of puts it Knowing who God is, he, he, he says these words, Come to me, <laughs> come to the Savior and make no delay. <laughs> so let's sing it together.
hearts are pure and free, and we shall gather Savior with thee in our eternal home. Let's pray together the prayer Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And may the Lord himself bless each of you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you, give you his peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, the one true and living God. Amen and amen.